Hi, everyone. Welcome to another destination certification catch up uh, weekend. It is Sunday, August 22nd. I am Courtney Lee Malpass filling in for Marnie Hernandez. Uh, today, we unfortunately are having issues with Princess Cruise Line getting into the OneSource website, getting into the training academy. So today, uh, for her group vote, we decided to switch over to travelagentacademy.com and we're going to work on. The course, uh, Miami, Greater Miami, and the beaches. Um, for those of you who are new, I have the link in the chat here for travelagentacademy.com. Okay, so let me see if I can pretend to be a new person. I'm going to log out right here and see if I can walk you through if you are new. Um, if not, uh, don't worry about trying to register just follow along uh, as best you can and take note of the answers to the quizzes and the test and then once you get your login set up and you're registered uh once this video is posted on youtube you can always go back and catch up then and you'll be ahead of the game so it won't take you as long because you'll have all the answers all right let me see do, 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 do. i am going to try one of my old email addresses here so uh, when you get to travelagentacademy.com. If you're new, obviously you want to click sign up. If you're not new and you're already registered, you click log in. So let's see. Okay, so as you go through here, this page, you would use your email address, create a password, your first and your last name. Um, company would be your um, particular brand. So for example, here, I would put the discoverer, that's mine. Um, okay. Uh, you would put your mailing address in here. Okay. And your phone number, you can add your website. Um, what best describes you and your agency's business do, do, do. you are a home-based agent. Okay. And then the sales uh, volume, you just click zero to 250,000. Okay, and your IATA number, that is going to be, let me put it in the chat because I have to type it out, otherwise I say it wrong, 0582-4840, okay? That is the IATA number for Archer that you wanna put in. Let me just make sure I get that there. Okay, so that's in the chat. And that's all you need to fill in there. Um, ba -da -ba -da. So none of these have an asterisk next to it. You can click IATA um, and then indicate consortia. That is going to be Travel Leaders Network, okay? So I'll put that information in the chat as well. Consortia equals Travel Leaders Network. Okay. And then you can always go back and adjust your profile. That's what selling these destinations are. Um, you can see all of these different places. Um, and we have plenty of courses on here already that will help you get certification in this. Marnie has other videos on her YouTube um, for places in Central America, South America, Australia. We just started on Friday, um, other areas of the South Pacific. So, areas in the Middle East, Europe, Africa, all of that. Um, but again, anything that's not an asterisk, don't worry about filling it in. Um, just make sure that you have the correct information as you're going through. Okay, so you would scroll down, you have yes, yes, by registering, you agree, and then you would hit submit, and then you should be able to log in. Okay. But again, if you don't worry about rushing through it, um, it's all being recorded. It will be up on Marnie's YouTube uh, at some point this week. Um, if not, definitely by next weekend. Why is this not? Okay, let me go back. There we go. I'm gonna log into mine so I can actually do this with you guys. I have a question. Does any other check marks need to be checked off? Um, because I'm done filling out the rest of the information. I'm just at the bottom of the page. 
Um, no, um, as long as they don't have an asterisk next to it, you don't have to fill it out at this point. You can always go back and adjust your profile um, once you kind of decide the, if you have a particular specialty. So for example, if you only want to sell Central America, um, then you can go and click that. Um, but really only, only the things that require an asterisk, fill that out, hit submit, make sure you have your boxes checked at the end. Yes, yes, and that you agree um, at the very bottom and it should go through for you. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right, and once you have your login, once everyone's there, okay, this is the opening page, this uh, scrolling thing, uh, bar keeps going through advertising different courses. Um, but if you can scroll down, you'll see you have featured all destination cruise hotel resorts. So you can break it down. Um, the easiest way to find anything on here is by clicking all. Okay. So, and they're in alphabetical order. That's the reason I think it's the easiest way to find anything. Um, so we're going to go, this is page one. Okay. And like I said, a lot of these courses have already been done. So you can go through Marnie's YouTube. I'll make sure I post that at the end. Again, in the chat, uh, the link to her YouTube page so that you guys can get caught up on everything, earn your certification. Some of these courses have prizes um, attached to them that it, once you complete the course, you're entered into a prize drawing. Um, so that's always fun. So if you go to page two, you'll see Miami up here at the top. Okay, and we're gonna click get started. Okay, then do, 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 scroll down, see if there's anything else. All right, so most of us are here. We're gonna go ahead and move forward with it, okay? And I do apologize for any mispronunciation of any words. Um, I'm not the best speaker, uh, but I will do my best with this uh, to not butcher anything. And if you know how to pronounce something and I don't, please feel free to correct me, okay? All right, so Greater Miami and the Beaches Specialist Program. Learn how to leverage the many facets of Greater Miami to sell it both as a singular destination and a cruise extension to be explored at length by the travelers with all sorts of interests from cuisine to the arts to outdoor life. This course will take you through neighborhoods as flavorful as Little Havana and Little Haiti and through the design district and the street art mecca of Wynwood. The fun-filled chic of Miami Beach and its Art Deco architecture the emerging hotspot of glamour. The Fena district in Mid Beach and the laid back no frills vibe of Sunny Isles Beach are also on tap, not to mention the spirited nightlife and attractions of downtown Miami, among many other experiences. And for anyone wishing to delve into the great outdoors, there's South Dade, home to the Everglades National Park, a habitat for alligators, deer, and bald eagles, and Biscayne National Park, a water lover, lover's paradise. Okay. So lots to learn, it looks like. So we're going to, all right, nothing going on in the chat. So I'm gonna click enroll now. Please complete the fields below. If we continue, well, there's no fields here. Um, let someone let me know if they have fields. Uh, we're gonna hit submit. No, you just hit submit and then it takes you to the next screen. Perfect, thank you, Darius. Some of these courses are a little bit funny. All right, specialist program. So it looks like we're going to have access to a cruise guide for Miami, city sites and a map, full brochure, um, and all of this marketing material. Uh, you can, of course, reach out to them and request physical copies, but these are available to you for free um, download once you complete this course and everything. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the good things about earning these certifications. You get your, uh, what one did you click to Miami? Certified. Uh, so the course is Greater Miami. That's on the second page. If you click all uh, on the home page, if you click all courses or course catalog, should take you down there. 
Just click over to the second page, click Greater Miami, and then there's a button as you scroll down a little bit on the page that says Enroll Now. So you click that and then hit Submit on the next page. It's gonna ask you to fill out the form. There's no form. Click Submit and then it should pop you right here. Okay. All right. Um, if anybody gets kicked out of the course, if you wind up having technical difficulties of your own, um, don't worry, we'll do our best to wait for you on the quiz. If you're struggling to get back into the course or to catch up, that's okay. Like I said, just make note of the answers to the questions on the test or the quiz, whatever they're gonna call it. Um, and then you'll be able, um, we'll help you out there if we can get you to the quiz, okay? So this one looks like it's gonna be pretty short. Um, so we're gonna hit start. Let's see. Okay, learning path, one, two, three, four. Okay, awesome. So it looks like we have four chapters, so we should be able to tackle this in an hour and a half, okay? So I know some people uh, have other things to do around 3, 3.30. Um, I have to get my act together. Uh, I have <laughs> training on campus tomorrow for school. I start teaching again. So, all right. So let's go. If everyone's here, we'll go chapter one and start. Okay, looks like it's going to pop up with another screen. Okay. So chapter one, exploring greater Miami and the beaches, an overview. Okay, and it looks, and if you do move forward without us, that's absolutely fine. Uh, when we all get there as a group, just see if we can uh, all help each other out on the quiz, okay? Awesome, all right, so get started. All right. Beautiful beaches, unique multicultural neighborhoods, lively arts and nightlife scenes, global dining. Your clients will find all of this and much more when they visit Greater Miami and the beaches. In this chapter, you will find an overview of the destination from its unforgettable festivals to its amazing museums to its sizzling culinary scene. In the following chapters, we'll open the door to Greater Miami's vibrant neighborhoods, beaches, and surrounding areas and explore its status as an imminent crew cruise destination, which can easily be leveraged to plan longer stays for your clients. Okay. okay, select a topic below to get started and all topics must be completed prior to taking the exam. Okay, so promotional events, Let's see what this has. Okay. A year-round calendar of festivals and events brings locals and visitors together for celebrations that focus on food and drink, music, arts and culture, health and wellness, and sports, to name just a few. The Miami Temptations program makes sure there's something new and fascinating going on nearly every month of the year with special pricing and deals. Select a date range to learn more. Okay, let's see what this does. March. Oh, okay, here we go. Miami Health and Wellness, February and March. Suggestions for healthy dining spots. I think that's sports uh, and physical activities like jogging routes. Okay, let's do April, May. Miami Attractions and Museums, discounted admission to top museums and attractions. June and September. Miami Hotels, deals on rooms, packages, amenities, and more. Cool. Miami spas are July and August, and that's up to 50% off treatments at top spas. That sounds fun in a much better price range, <laughs> right? August and September is Miami Spice, special three course prefix menus at top restaurants. Okay, so foodies, if you have clients that are foodies, August and September would be a good time to promote. All right, and Miami Entertainment is for October and November. Savings on performances and films that make up the city's rich entertainment scene. And last but not least, Miami Arts and Heritage in December and January, focusing on the city's multi multicultural diversity with savings on cultural attractions. Cool, cool. All right, so we're going to close that and looks like we hit next. Okay, let's pause for a pop quiz. Let's see. 
All right, drag and drop the correct word from the word bank. When you're finished, click submit. Throughout the year, the Miami blank program focuses on different themes from spas and wellness to restaurants, arts, and diversity, and promotes local businesses, museums, and arts venues through special pricing and deals. Okay, was it, I think it was Temptations. I think John shared that in the chat. Yes, Temptations. Okay. Awesome, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're gonna hit continue. All right, so that was first one down. Next on to diversity. Let's see what we have here. Diversity, Greater Miami and the Beaches is a melting pot with a diverse population that traces its heritage to Hispanic, African, European, and Asian roots, as well as other regions around the world. Click here, delve deeper. In particular, its Hispanic population is composed primarily of people of Cuban, Colombian, Dominican, Venezuelan, Honduran, and Nicaraguan or origins or descent. That multicultural influence can be experienced in the city's cuisine, events, cultural attractions, and even neighborhoods like Little Havana and Little Haiti. Okay. Oh, that was short. Okay. Food and nightlife. Okay. Food and drink plus nightlife. Miami is where well-renowned chefs have come to launch award-winning restaurants. Added to the culinary star power is a melting pot of cuisines from farm to table fare to ethnic eats served in establishments that range from fine dining restaurants to casual coffee shops. Curious to try Peruvian fare or Korean barbecue? Looking for an American steakhouse or creative vegan options? Prefer waterfront dining or a downtown ambience? No matter your client's taste, there's a restaurant for them. Select a topic below to learn more. Okay, traditional food. Because of the vast diversity in Miami's population, anyone with a craving for ethnic food will find lots to choose from, including Argentinian, Asian, Brazilian, Cuban, Caribbean, Italian, Mexican, and Spanish fare, to name just a few. There are plenty of American eateries too, like barbecue joints and steakhouses, plus vegetarian and vegan options. Okay, ambience. Visitors can find almost any type of ambience from waterfront cafes to candlelit dining rooms. Lots to choose from. Nightlife, primarily in Miami Beach and downtown Brickwell, runs the gamut. Dance clubs, cocktail bars, intimate lounges, dive bars, and more. Many feature live music from Cuban to hip hop to jazz and entertainment such as sketch and stand-up comedy and even aerial acrobatics. Okay, lots, lots to choose from. So it looks like everything from quiet to busy, um, foodies, drinks, partying, looks like it has it all. LGBTQ Miami. LGBTQ clients, thanks to its amazing weather, thriving art scene, diverse population, and nonstop nightlife, Greater Miami has earned its spot as one of the preferred vacation destinations among the LGBTQ community. With more than 15 annual events, including Winter Party Festival in March, Miami Beach Pride in April, and Aqua Girl Festival in October, Greater Miami offers something for everyone. Okay, let's click here. Okay. While all of Greater Miami and the beaches is LGBTQ friendly, a couple of neighborhoods are known as LGBTQ hubs. South Beach with its Art Deco buildings, 12th Street uh, Gay Beach, luxury and boutique hotels, including a gay only property and plenty of nightlife. Wynwood, a former industrial neighborhood known for its outdoor art, dozens of galleries, funky shops and hip bars and restaurants. Okay. Is that it for that? That's it for that. Okay. Getting around. It's easy to get to, from, and around Greater Miami and the beaches with the city's many transportation options. The Miami Intermodal Center, MIC, located just east of Miami International Airport, is Miami Dade County's main transportation hub with options that include car rentals inner city, <coughs> excuse me, and local bus services and commuter heavy rail and long distance trains. 
The MIA, the Miami Mover automated train shuttles passengers between the MIC and the airport. Okay, so lots of ways to get around and then also um, shuttle between uh, the main transportation hub and the airport. So that's something that usually is attractive to clients when they don't have to think too hard about transportation, especially now in a post COVID world uh, where rental cars are very, very difficult to secure for clients. Other transportation options that serve Miami uh, include taxis, ride-sharing companies like Uber and Lyft, and Miami-Dade Transit's airport flyer with daily express bus service between Miami and Miami Beach. Oh, okay, and I, the, the airport and the beach, excuse me. Brightline Virgin Trains USA High Speed Rail. Okay, so that's probably in and out of the city. I would assume, maybe. And complementary transportation options available throughout Greater Miami and the beaches include trolleys, which is pictured here, and Freebie. Freebie is a private company offering limited complementary ride services. Ride Freebie is the app, okay? So Freebie is a private company offer, uh, offering limited complementary ride services. Metro Mover in downtown Miami, Brickwell, takes riders free of charge to the area's major stops seven days a week, okay? So it looks like they have a lot of options for free transportation, public transportation. Um, so that's, again, something usually very attractive to clients. Okay, all right, attractions and events. Miami and the Beaches offers a myriad, myriad of attractions and events so there's something for every age group and just about every interest. Here are just a few examples. Adrian Arst Center for the Performing Arts of Miami-Dade County. At the Adrian Arst Center for the Performing Arts of Miami-Dade County, visitors can see productions such as operas, plays, musicals, and classical music. Join a free tour on Monday or Saturday. Okay, that's, hey, anything free, that's something you wanna to promote to your clients. So free tours Monday or Saturday and browse a farmer's market on market Mondays. Okay, and that's in downtown Miami, Brickwell. Coconut Grove Arts Festival. Every year in February, a mile of coastline along Key Biscayne Bay transforms into an arts village displaying jury selected works from artists from around the world. Come view cutting edge pieces ranging from painting to photography, from sculpture to jewelry, in mediums that include fiberglass, clay, metal, and digital components. There's plenty to do for kids and everyone will enjoy live music and the fresh bites provided by gourmet vendors and local chefs. Keep an eye out for cooking demonstrations. Okay, so Coconut Grove in February. Okay. Jungle Island. Some of the world's rarest and most exotic animals reside at Jungle Island, an intimate zoological Zoological park that's being reinvented as an eco adventure theme park with engaging animal shows, informative exhibits, and hands on interactions with fascinating Adam animals like lemurs and sloths. Okay, Jungle Island, downtown Miami, Brookwell. Okay. Live music at the stage presents free shows every day and night year round, featuring local artists at the Marina Stage in Bayside Marketplace. Okay. The base is a contemporary art museum devoted to expressing Miami Beach's international and culturally diverse character. Visitors will find art of all kinds, including fashion, design, and architecture. National Young Arts Week. Accomplished young classical jazz and hip hop vocalists from around the country perform during National Young Arts Week in January. Okay, Young Arts Week in January. The week also features theater, jazz instrumental, dance, film screenings, writer's readings, and a design, photography, and visual arts ex exhibition. Okay. Olympia Theater. Built in 1926 as a silent movie palace, the Olympi Olympia Theater hosts live arts performances, films, and community events, and is available for corporate meetings and social events. Okay, and that's in downtown Miami, Brickwell. Okay, so Olympia Theater, Historic Theater, 1926, 
The Perez Art Museum Miami, or PAM, is dedicated to collecting and exhibiting international, modern, and contemporary art of the 20th and 21st centuries. Okay. So PAM Art Museum. Okay. Okay. The Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science features a planetarium, an aquarium, and permanent exhibitions dedicated to South Florida's biodiversity, the physics of light, aviation, the human mind and body, and more. Okay, so the Frost Museum is science. Okay, and last one, the official Art Deco walking tour. Take the official Art Deco walking tour by the Miami Design Preservation League and learn about some of the most unique and creative architectural works found anywhere. Local experts will tell you about the history behind these buildings and about the people who helped create the vibrant community that Miami Beach has come to be. Okay, that sounds fun. I'm from Philly, so we have uh, murals all over the city and there are so many companies that do mural tours here. So that's always something I'm interested in. Oh, okay, pop quiz time, let's see. Okay, mix and match, drag and drop the correct description to the attraction. When you're finished, click submit. Okay, so we have Jungle Island, live music at the stage, Olympia Theater and Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science. All right, so let's see here. The silent uh, movie one is Olympia Theater. Uh, silent movie, Olympia Theater. Okay. Um, Eco Adventure is Jungle Island. Yep. Okay. Eco Adventure, Jungle Island here. Free shows is the free shows live is music. The... Live music, free shows. Yep. Okay. And then that means the planetarium, the aquarium, and everything else has to be science, right? Yep. Okay. They did switch the order too, because on mines, the uh, answer for planetarium was not right above it. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, that I hate when they do that. <laughs> All right. So Jungle Island Eco Adventure Theme Park, live music <clears throat> at the stage presents free shows every day and night. Olympia Theater, Silent Movie Palace from the 1920s. And the science museum, planetarium, aquarium ex exhibitions, all of that. Okay, so take a picture if you're not quite there yet um, of the screen here. We're going to click submit. Yay! All right, good job, guys. Teamwork, got it all right. Okay, perfect. All right, and accommodations. From limited service to luxury, Greater Miami and the Beaches offers accommodations to suit all budgets and tastes. Clients looking for an intimate lodging option can book a bed and breakfast inn or a boutique property. Those who love being close to the ocean can stay at a beach hotel or rent a houseboat. There are even pet-friendly accommodations and short-term rentals. Okay, so again, Miami seems to have a little bit of everything for everyone. Okay, Let's see. All right, so that was it. Everyone ready for the final exam? With it? Okay, here we go. Okay, so it looks like we have eight questions. Okay, and again, if these are out of order for you for any reason, just take a screenshot, take a picture with your phone, make note of the answer um, for the question, and then we'll move, we'll keep moving forward. Hopefully, your questions do come up. If for any reason your questions don't come up, uh, just let us know read them out loud to the group and we'll do our best to help you out, okay? Greater Miami and the beaches not only boast eclectic neighborhoods, acclaimed art venues, and a sizzling nightlife and culinary scene, but it is also a popular blank destination. Polar, safari, cruise, or alpine? Cruise, I cruise. believe. Yeah, I think cruise is the only one that makes sense there. I would be shocked if it was polar or alpine. <laughs> Just a bit. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna tell us at the end how well we do, okay? In, in December and January, the Miami Temptations program focuses on blank as it celebrates the city's multicultural diversity with savings on cultural attractions. Is it health and wellness, spas, hotels, or arts and heritage? Arts, arts, arts and heritage. heritage. Arts and heritage, okay. Do, do, do. Let me just check the chat. Okay. 
Which neighborhoods are reflections of Miami's remarkable cultural diversity? Select the best answer. Little Havana, Little Haiti, both of the above or neither? Both. Both. It's both. 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 Okay. Good job. Great. Great nightlife featuring live music and comedy can be found throughout Greater Miami and the beaches, but is especially concentrated in which neighborhoods and areas? Is that Miami Beach, downtown Brickwell, both of the above, or neither? I did both, but I might be wrong on that one. What do we think? Do we think both? I feel like it's both. Okay. So we'll go here. And like I said, it seems at the end, they'll tell us what we got right and what we got wrong. And with these courses, usually if you, it's terrible to say, but if you fail, they let you go and take it again. So if we need to take it again, uh, we can do that. Okay, all right. Along with South Beach, Wynwood, uh, along with South Beach, Wynwood, a formal industrial neighborhood known for its galleries, funky shops and hip bars and restaurants is also known for being LGBTQ friendly, true or false? True. True. Okay. All right. It looks like someone in the chat got a hundred percent. Awesome. So please let us know if we're picking the wrong answers as we go. Okay. All right. At the Miami Intermodal Center, MIC, located just east of Miami International Airport, your clients can find which of the following: car rentals, inner city and local bus services, commuter, heavy rail, and long distance trains the Miami mover or all of the above? All of them, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I think it was all of them. Awesome, okay, great. And we have confirmation in the chat. All right. As for accommodations, those who love being close to the ocean can stay at a beach, at a beach hotel or easily rent a tugboat, houseboat. houseboat, or lighthouse. I said houseboat. Houseboat. Yeah, I think it's houseboat. I wouldn't want to be on a tugboat. I've seen them come up and down the Delaware River here and it's, no, <laughs> I think it's houseboat. Okay. All right, it looks like this is the last question. Visitors who take the official Art Deco walking tour will learn about some of Miami Beach's most creative buildings and history-making people, pre-Columbian life on the Southern shores of what is now the United States, artifacts from pirate households, fashion in Miami throughout the past five centuries. Miami Beach's most creative buildings? Yeah, I think it's the build. I think it's the buildings and history making people. Because usually uh, murals have. Uh, yeah, it's the first one. Yeah, a, a story behind it. So it was the last one for me, but. Okay. Yep, same here. Woohoo! 100%. Okay. Awesome. All right, submit. Yay! Good job, guys. Teamwork. Woohoo! I'm trying to be a cheerleader like Marnie, but she's so much better at it than I am. <laughs> okay. Team. Yep. Good team. All right. Uh, anyone have any question that appeared that we, that I didn't read through? Nope. Okay. Awesome. It, it good. does let you review it and it does show the correct answers. If you click on review it, Sam. Oh, okay. Let's try that. All right. Perfect. All right. So just in case anyone missed anything, um, it's a popular cruise destination. Okay. Miami Arts and Heritage for December and January. Both of the above for the neighborhoods. Okay, Havana and Haiti. Both of the above for live music and comedy, Miami Beach and downtown Brickwell. Okay. Wynwood is true, LGBTQ friendly. All of the above for transportation, okay? You can rent a houseboat or stay at a beach hotel if you wanna be close to the ocean. And creative buildings and history making people for the Art Deco walking tour, okay? Let's see. All right, so how do we get out of here? Uh, close this window and proceed to the next chapter. So if it popped up in um, another tab for you, just close the tab. If it popped up in a separate window, like it did for me, 
I'm gonna close that. And it should reload here and then should turn green. Yeah, should have a green dot. Number one should be green to show that you completed it. Okay. All right. Let's move on to chapter two. Greater Miami and the beaches. Okay, let's see. Looks like we're going through the neighborhoods in this one. All right. Everyone ready? Here we go. Get started. Greater Miami and the beaches is one of the most culturally, culturally diverse destinations in the United States. Within this international, international metropolis, each neighborhood has its own personality shaped by the heritage of the people who live there and expressed in its architecture, food, attractions, cultural and artistic institutions, and genuine hospitality. Okay, looks like one, two, three, four, and then the exam. So here we go again. At the center of Greater Miami and the beaches is the downtown Miami Brickwell neighborhood, an international business and financial center. This multicultural area boasts a diverse art scene, global dining, and world-class hotels, among other amenities and attractions. Okay. See. Historic and modern. Site of Henry Flag Flagler's, right? Flagler's Royal Palm Hotel, which opened in 1897 along the banks of the Miami River. Downtown Miami is a blend of old and new with century old buildings coexisting with modern structures like the Port of Miami and American Airlines Arena, home court of the Miami Heat. I'm a hockey fan, I am not a basketball fan. So that's, that's their basketball team, right? Miami Heat, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, young and spirited. Downtown Miami is a hip urban area that has, a, that has drawn a younger generation of residents. A doubling of this population in the past decade has brought new restaurants, bars, shops, parks, and museums. Okay, so a lot of younger people are moving there. Upscale Brickwell. Just across the Miami River to the south, Brickwell is the city's financial hub with skyscrapers and high-rise condos overlooking Biscayne Bay. I hope I'm saying that right. This upscale area bustles with chic boutiques, galleries, bars, and restaurants, some with sweeping views of the bay. Okay. So historic and modern, young and spirited, and then you have the financial district as well. Ooh, okay, lots more to click on. There's lots to see and do in the downtown Miami Brickwell neighborhood. Start here, we'll just go across, okay? Right, literary, visual, and performing arts. The Perez Art Museum Miami, PAM, is dedicated to collecting and exhibiting international, modern, contem and contemporary art of the 20th and 21st centuries. Museum of Art and Design at Miami Dade College, which is recently renovated, focuses on visual aesthetics through direct engagement with original works of art and design. Olympia Theater, built in 1926 as a silent movie palace, hosts live arts performances, films, and community events, and is available for corporate meetings and social events. Adrian Arst Center for the Performing Arts of Miami-Dade County delights visitors with productions such as operas, plays, musicals, and classical music. Join a free tour on Monday or Saturday and browse a farmer's market on Market Mondays. Okay, close. There we go. Great. Architecture. A self-guided tour of 20 architecturally significant buildings in historic downtown Miami includes the Spanish Renaissance revival style Miami News slash Freedom Tower. I think that's this thing in the back. Uh, the Florentine style old federal building and the Art Deco Alfred I. DuPont building. History. The History Miami Museum, a Smithsonian affiliate, celebrates Miami's history as the crossroads of the Americas with exhibitions, city tours, and collections, among other amenities. A national symbol of liberty, the Freedom Tower pays tribute to the Cuban refugees who arrived in Florida during the Cold War. The architecturally notable building, once home to the Miami News, 
is on the campus of Miami-Dade College and its second floor serves as an exhibition space. Okay. Great, science and technology. The Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science features a planetarium and aquarium and permanent exhibitions dedicated to South Florida's biodiversity, the physics of light, aviation, the human mind and body, and more. Okay. See what there is to do outdoors. Jungle Island, home to some of the world's rarest and most exotic animals, is an intimate zoological park that's being reinvented as an eco-adventure theme park with engaging animal shows, informative exhibits, and hands-on interactions with fascinating animals. Big Bus Tours Miami provides open top, hop on, hop off buses that stop at iconic spots throughout the destination. I think Big Bus Tours are in just about every major city around the world in some capacity. <laughs> Boat excursions. Several operators, <clears throat> excuse me, depart downtown embarkation points such as Bayside Marketplace, Miami Marina, oh, Miami Marina, Miami Marina, <clears throat> and Sea Isle Marina. For adrenaline seekers, Thriller Miami Speedboat Adventures features Miami Vice style tours, while Jet Boat Miami features jet boat rides plus jet ski rentals, banana boat rides, and yacht sightseeing tours, among other options. For those who prefer a more leisurely sightseeing cruise, there's Island Queen Cruises, Inc. and Captain Jimmy's Fiesta Cruises, which also offers evening disco party cruises. Now that sounds like a party. Right, and children's learning. In addition to Jungle Island and exhibits at the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science, downtown Miami Brickwell has a museum just for kids. The Miami Children's Museum offers interactive educational exhibits that focus on art, construction, music, the ocean, sustainability, and more. Okay, I think that was all of them, right? Downtown Miami Brickwell Food and Drink. As a multicultural hub, the downtown Miami Brickwell neighborhood is known for its world-class international dining scene with many waterfront restaurants, including brasseries, bistros, bars, cafes, and other venues that offer sweeping views of the city and the bay. Latin American restaurants from Argentinian to Venezuelan to Venezuelan are plentiful here. But visitors also will find other ethnic eateries, including Mediterranean, Italian, Cuban, Greek, French, Japanese, including a Forbes five-star restaurant and, Amer <clears throat> and American. There are even dining establishments that merge two types of cuisine, such as Japanese, Latin, French, Asian, and Mexican, Mediterranean. Many restaurants here use locally sourced ingredients, such as fresh seafood with menus that are seasonally driven. Some have live music, others are chef driven, and some of the best food can be found at food halls, such as the Citadel and Luna Park at Brickwell City Center. Okay, that's it, that's it for that one. Downtown Miami Brickwell nightlife. Visitors to Greater Miami and the beaches who are looking for a sizzling nightlife have come to the right place. Downtown Miami Brick Brickell is after Dark Central, offering everything from martini bars and rooftop bars to jazz lounges and dance clubs. There are even venues featuring immersive live shows with acts such as dancers, aerialists, and acrobats. Okay. All right, accommodations. Most of the Greater Miami and the Beach's major cosmopolitan hotels from luxury to limited service properties are located in downtown Miami Brickwell, including many that are within walking distance to many of the neighborhood's attractions and activities. Visitors looking for alternative lodging will also find accommodations like intimate boutique properties and apartment rentals with full kitchens. Okay, so if they're looking to be in the center, uh, if your clients are looking to be in the center of everything, um, or if you wanna travel here, definitely look at the downtown area because it seems it's uh, within walking distance to a lot of stuff. Okay. okay, moving on, Little Haiti. Haitian immigrants seeking refuge in the 1980s have created a lively neighborhood known as Little Haiti. Visitors can see this area's Caribbean influence in the architecture, galleries, museums, restaurants, and hip boutiques, many of them family owned. Okay, Let's see what the attractions are. 
The attractions in Little Haiti reflect the neighborhood's cultural culture and celebrate its roots. The Haitian Heritage Museum preserves Haiti's rich heritage with Haitian art, artifacts, music, film, and literary works. Haitian art, sculpture, and crafts are on display of, at the Little Haiti Cultural Complex. The complex also offers classes in screen printing, Afro-Caribbean folk dancing, and other subjects, as well as performances by Dance Now Miami, Florida's leading contemporary dance company in a 300-seat theater. Right. This is where to come for authentic Haitian cooking, but Little Haiti is also home to restaurants serving other types of fare, including Creole, Haitian American fusion, Latin American, Italian, and barbecue. And nightlife is more laid back here with cocktail bars, wine bars, social clubs, a comedy club, and even a hookah lounge. Okay, so Little Haiti still has nightlife, but a little more um, subdued, a little more laid back. Okay. Historic Overtown. Let's see what's here. One of the oldest neighborhoods in the destination, Historic Overtown is also an important place in Black history. It was home to Black workers for Black workers more than 100 years ago and has grown into a vital area for the Black community with shopping, dining, and entertainment. Okay. Black history and culture are on display at Historic Overtown's attractions. The Black Archives Historic Lyric Theater Cultural Arts Complex is located in the district once known as Little Broadway. It features a 400 seat theater that opened in 1913 and presented films and vaudeville shows. Over the years, the theater hosted artists like Aretha Franklin, Count Basie, and B.B. King, and now it continues to showcase live performances. Built in 1915 by real estate magnate D.A. Dorsey, the area's first Black millionaire, the D.A. Dorsey House is now a rental property owned by the Black Archives. It was reconstructed, it reconstructed in 1995 and is listed on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. <clears throat> Dorsey was also a cult co-founder of the historic Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in 1896. The church was a meeting place for civil rights movement figures, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and is listed on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. Okay, Black Police Precinct and Courthouse Museum. This building is the only known facility in the US designed, devoted to, and operated as a separate station house and municipal court for African-Americans. Designed by renowned Miami architect, Walter G. DeGarmo, and built in 1950 during the time of segregation and Jim Crow law, the project represented an effort to bring some level of equality to policing in the black community. The precinct closed in 1963, but today serves as an event space and a fascinating museum that offers insight into policing and race. Okay. All right. And it looks like these three. Okay. So food and drink. Visitors looking for the best soul food will find it in historic Overtown. Dining establishments range from casual family owned eateries to upscale restaurants that put a modern twist on menu items which includes smoked ribs, chicken wings, shrimp, and crab. Let's take a look at nightlife. For the best nightlife in historic Overtown, head to the Historic Lyric Theater for Folk Life Fridays on the first Friday of every month through 2022. Okay, so there might be a change coming up after next year. Maybe they're gonna do something different. Okay. And accommodations. Historic Overtown's lodging choices include a bed and breakfast, a boutique hotel, and a limited service property. Okay. So plenty of places to stay, plenty of things to do and experience for everyone. All right, pop quiz, here we go. Mix and match, drag and drop the attraction to the names most frequently associated with it. When you're finished, click submit. All right, so we have the DA Dorsey house, the Black Police Precinct and Courthouse Museum, Historic Leader Theater, and Historic Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. The okay. church is Martin Luther King. Okay, church is Martin Luther King here. 
Um, the Dorsey house is the Dorsey. Okay. The Black Precinct is um, Miami. Miami's yes, first African-American yeah. law officer. Yeah. Okay. And He's then the theater. theater. Yeah. Okay. Aretha Franklin. Yeah. Okay. Everyone good? Great. Yay. Correct. Awesome. All right. So Little Havana and then the final exam. Going through this pretty good, guys. This is good. All right, Little Havana. In, 19, in the 1960s, Cuban exiles settled in what is now known as Little Havana. And although Cuban culture still defines this neighborhood with Cuban restaurants and bakeries, Ventanitas, I'm, I took French in high school, I'm so sorry, uh, walk-up cafes and colorful street festivals along Calle Ocho, uh, that Southwest, Southwest 8th Street, it has grown to encompass culture from around Latin America. Okay. Great, Little Havana's attractions and activities reflect its Cuban and Latin American influence with an emphasis on the arts. So let's see what music. The opera Atelier, 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 uh, which produces opera and classical music performances and collaborates across other art forms. Uh, there's also the Miami-Dade County Auditorium, which produces operas, symphonies, theatrical performances, ballets, concerts, and lectures. Okay. All right. Let's see theater. Uh, Teatro Avante, offering contemporary and classical Ibero-American plays in Spanish with sub super title. I think that's supposed to be subtitles in English, not super titles. Uh, Miami-Dade College's Tower Theater, listed on the National Register of Historic Places, which shows multicultural films, live performances, and cultural and educational programs. Let's see dance. The Miami Hispanic Cultural Arts Center, known as the White House of the Arts, home to, a, home to the Miami His, Hispanic Ballet, the Cuban Classical Ballet of Miami, and Creation Arts Center, a venue for other artistic disciplines like theater, art exhibits, and films. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye here. Do, do, do. Okay. Visual art, the Futurama 1637 art building, a creative workspace that offers monthly events like art openings and musical productions. Okay. And walking tours. For a good orientation of this neighborhood, Art Deco and Little Havana Tours offers a walking tour that includes a local farmer's market, a cigar factory, and a gallery with the largest Cuban art collection outside of Cuba, as well as local foods and beverages. Okay, so tons, tons of stuff to do in Miami and in the Miami beaches. All right, food and drink. The emphasis here is on Cuban delicacies, such as ropa vieja, stewed beef, uh, stewed beef, sorry, with tomatoes and onions, and fresh fruit batido uh, milkshake, with eateries ranging from family-owned cafes to a supper club with live entertainment and a restaurant helmed by a James Beard award-winning chef. But visitors will also find foods from other Latin American countries as well as other ethnic ethnic foods like Thai, Chinese, and Spanish. Besides the Cuban Supper Club with live entertainment, Little Havana offers bars and lounges with Latin music. And on the third Friday of each month at 7 p.m., Vernes Culturales, uh, Cultural Fridays, uh, showcases the neighborhood's art, music, and culture in a festive atmosphere along Southwest 8th Street. Okay. And accommodations. A quaint tropical boutique hotel as well as an apartment rental are among Little Havana's lodging options, okay? So each neighborhood has its own quirks, its own personality, its own food and drink, nightlife, accommodations, all of that. So as you're qualifying your client, especially if they want to go to Miami and they're not really sure, you want to kind of see what their interests are so you can match them with the best place to stay. Okay, another pop quiz. Here we go. 
All right, more mix and matches. Okay, so we have uh, Chicho Avante, Miami Hispanic Cultural Arts Center, Vernes Culturales, uh, Cultural Fridays, Calle Ocho, eighth, uh, Southwest, eighth, Southwest 8th Street, and Art Deco and Little Havana Tours. All right, so let's see where they all go. <laughs> Calle Ocho? Goes Calle. Into, yeah, it goes into the first slot. Frequent site for colorful street festivals? Yep. Okay. Teatro goes to the second one. Okay, the theater. Okay. The Miami Hispanic one goes to the third. Uh, with the ballet. Yep. Okay. And then those go in order. Okay, so. Vernes Culturales here mm -hmm. and Art Deco down here. Yep. Okay. Everyone agree? Good. Got your picture? Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is great. I'm almost scared to get too excited because I'm going to get something wrong. <laughs> All right, so we finished those four on to the final exam. Okay, so another eight questions. And again, if you get stuck or anything, just make note of the answers. And if we need to go back over anything, we'll go back over it at the end. Right. Little Havana was settled in the 1960s by exiles from Puerto Rico, Savannah, Georgia, Haiti, or Cuba. I think it's Cuba. It's yeah. Cuba. I put the wrong one. I put Haiti. Oh, okay. All right. So Cuba for this one. All right. Visitors can see Little Haiti's blank influence in its architecture, galleries, museums, restaurants, and hip boutiques. Australian, Caribbean, Polynesian, or Cuban? That should be Caribbean. Yeah, I'm going to go Caribbean. All right. Historic Overtown is known as an area settled by exiles from Cuba in the 1960s, an area, area settled by immigrants from Haiti in the, in the 1980s, a home to Black workers over 100 years ago, and still a vital area to the Black community today, or none of the above? A home to Black workers over 100 years ago. Okay. All right. So Historic Overtown, um, vital to the Black community today. Okay. Here we go. Downtown Miami and Brickwell, I keep, I always add a W, I'm so sorry there, um, <laughs> are separated by the Miami River, a field of wildflowers, I-95, a mile long stretch of warehouses. I think it was the river. I think it was too. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go with that. All right. Downtown Miami is the city's blank and Brickell is the city's blank. All right. A uh, hip urban area with younger residents for downtown Miami and financial hub with chic boutiques and restaurants for Brickell, uh, least populated neighborhood and most laid back neighborhood or the only recycling area and the cigar manufacturing hub. It's the first one. Okay, so hip urban area with younger residents for downtown Miami and financial hub with Brickell. Yep. All right, there we go. Even though a variety of cuisines can be found throughout most of my Miami neighborhoods, the best place to find delicacies like ropa vieja, stewed beef with tomatoes and onions, and fresh fruit uh, batido, milkshake, and other Latin American fare is in... Downtown Havana. Miami, Havana, Haiti, or Historic Overtown? Little Havana. Havana? Okay. All right. There we go. And submit. All right. Two more. Attractions like Thriller Miami, Perez Art Museum, Museum of Art and Design at Miami Dade College, and the Freedom Tower can all be found in which neighborhood? Little Haiti, Little Havana, 
downtown Miami, Miami, Brickell, or historic Overtown? Downtown. Downtown? Okay. All right, last question. Just looking at it, I think I know the answer. Uh, throughout Greater Miami and the beaches, visitors can find which of the following? Art, history, and science museums, outdoor adventure, food of all kinds, cultural diversity, performing arts venues, a variety of architectural styles, including Art Deco, Florentine, Caribbean, and modern, or all of the above. All of the above. I think we're gonna go all of the above here. All right, here we go. Woohoo! Good job, guys. 100%. Awesome. All right. And just to review real quick, in case anyone missed anything, doesn't look so. Um, first answer is Cuba, Little Havana, Cuba. Little Haiti is a Caribbean influence. Historic Overtown is a home to Black workers over 100 years ago and still vital to the Black community today. Downtown Miami, uh, they're separated by the Miami River. Okay, uh, downtown Miami and Brickell is, uh, first one is hip urban area with younger residents. And then the other one is the financial hub. Okay, all of this food, all these different things can be found in Little Havana. And all these attractions are in the downtown area in the financial area, okay? And last one is, you can't really see it, but it's all of the above, okay? So you can find all this stuff in Greater Miami and the beaches, okay? Okay, there we go. So we're gonna close out of that. And remember, if it popped open in a new tab or new window, hit close, give this page a second, it'll refresh. So we're two down, two to go, okay? Doing good, guys. Doo -doo -doo. So this one, I think this one looks like it's gonna talk about the beaches. All right, so start chapter three. All right, the beaches and the surrounding areas. All right. Beachfront cities, urban hubs, charming villages. It's this diversity of environments surrounding the central core of Greater Miami and the beaches that makes this destination so alluring. All right, this one looks pretty short. So two things and then we'll have the final exam. Okay, All right. beaches. Select a beach to learn more. All right, so it looks, how about we just go straight down? Sounds good. All right, so we'll start with Sunny Isles. Right. The northernmost neighborhood, Sunny Isles Beach, is the quintessential laid back, no frills community with a fishing pier and an outdoor adventure lifestyle. Okay, so let's see what there is to do. <clears throat> attractions. Among the attractions here is the 1.5 mile long Hallover Park Beach, part of which is clothing optional. Okay, not going there, but you might have clients that want that. Uh, beach adjacent. Adjacent Hallover Park is a historic county park with palm tree shaded picnic areas, a skate park, and a, a pump track, I don't know what that is, and a dog friendly area. Okay. Food and drink. From casual to gourmet restaurants, uh, many of which are beachfront, including one that's situated on the sand, serve up a variety of cuisines. Okay. Nightlife. Among the nightlife options are a live music space and relaxing bars and lounges, including rooftop venues. And accommodations. Hotels on the beach or within walking distance range from budget to lim and limited service properties to luxury resorts. Okay. Okay, back to map. All right, Ball Harbor. Okay. The affluent beachside village of Ball Harbor, just south of Sunny Isles Beach, is a getaway for the rich and famous. It's fashionable and elegant, yet casual and quiet, and features a luxe beach. All right, so this is the fancy one, it looks like. All right, food and drink. Here, visitors will find plenty of fine dining establishments and upscale casual cafes, including beachfront restaurants. 
Spain nightlife. High-end hotel lounges make for relaxed evenings. And accommodations. World-class luxury resorts, excuse me, are the norm here, but there are also hotels offering more moderately priced options. Okay, so this area, Ball Harbor, maybe if your clients are looking to splurge on a vacation, I would say, because if it's the rich and famous area where they where all those celebrities like to go, then it's probably gonna cost a little bit more. All right. Surfside. Okay. Just south of Ball Harbor, a uh, charming surfside boasts a mile long pristine beach and a beachside bike and walking path. This small beachside town has a walkable downtown district with local businesses. So we have food and drink here. Beachside options include fine dining, open air cafes, and upscale casual restaurants. And for accommodations, among the lodging options are an oceanfront luxury property, a beachfront upscale all suite hotel, and a limited service hotel in town. Okay. So it seems much more laid back than uh, Ball Harbor. Okay, so that's Surfside. Right. Let's take a look at North Beach. Quieter North Beach is an ideal escape for those seeking relaxation or outdoor, outdoor activities with a wide beach, a boardwalk, and a path for running, walking, and biking. Okay, let's see what there is to do here. Attractions. North Beach Oceanside Be Park Beach is a wide crowd-free crowd -free stretch of sand with green space, walking trails, and shady spots. Nearby, North Beach Oceanside Park provides picnic tables and grills, winding pathways, and dog areas. Okay, so if people, if your clients uh, are looking for pet-friendly options, Miami definitely has a lot of that, and so do their beaches. Food and drink. Restaurants include oceanfront cafes and other eateries specializing in locally caught and sustainable seafood, plus a variety of other fare. Okay. Built in the Miami modern architectural style, the North Beach Van Shell Amphitheater hosts concerts in a range of genres, including opera, classical, pop, and reggae, as well as cultural events. Okay, that was that first picture. Cool. Very unique. Okay. Accommodations. MIMO architecture is on display at North Beach's historic hotels. There's also a beachfront resort, a wellness resort, and oceanfront apartment hotels. Okay, cool. So lots of different options for them. And plenty of beaches to pick from. So again, this is another reason why qualifying your client is so important. Um, especially if they're not sure where they want to go, try to get their interest out of them, try to get their vibe um, off of them before you start making suggestions. Um, otherwise you'll be throwing every beach at them that you possibly can. But if you can get kind of what they're looking for um, out of them before you start your research, that'll help you and save you a lot of time. Okay, Mid Beach. Just north, the upscale eclectic Mid Beach neighborhood has a world-class art scene, a pristine beach, plus premier hotels, restaurants, entertainment, nightlife, and attractions. All right, so let's see what there is to do. The multicultural uh, Fina, 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 apologies again, district is the hub of Mid Beach's art scene. Among its multi use art venues is the Fina Hotel with a plethora of art installations and murals, the Fina Forum, a 50,000 square foot performance space, and the 150 seat Fina Theater, which has played host to the likes of Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Ooh, Rat Pack, we're going back in time there. Um, day tours that start in Mid Beach focus on local ecology, architecture, design, history, and culture. Okay, so if you have clients that are interested, really interested in the arts, this would definitely be a place, uh, a beach that you would want to recommend to them, either staying in uh, the area or uh, experiencing while they're down there. Food and drink, with its upscale multicultural vibe, Mid Beach is home to award-winning chef-driven restaurants and bars, as well as casual cafes spanning a range of cuisines such as Japanese, Italian, Latin, and Caribbean. Okay. And nightlife. 
Visitors might spot a celebrity at one of Mid Beach's high energy dance clubs, including one with a bowling alley and an ice rink. Okay, bowling, ice skating. Sure, didn't know they go together, but apparently they do. Uh, more laid back nightlife can be found at glamorous bars and lounges, and the Fana Theater still hosts live performances. Okay, so lots, lots of different things to do. And accommodations, grand hotels with mid-century retro glam are part of Mid Beach's character. Other accommodations include design-centric boutique style hotels, limited service properties, and apartment hotels. Okay, so again, lots of different things to choose from for your clients, for food, attractions, things to do at night, and places to stay. All right, and last beach, South Beach. The most famous South Beach in the city of Miami Beach is the place to see and be seen. With its iconic nightlife and world-class restaurants, hotels, shops, and galleries, many in historic art deco buildings, plus cafes and bars along Ocean Drive, Sobe, as it's known locally, has been called the American Riviera. And there's even more to experience beyond the glitz and glamour. Okay, so let's see, tons of stuff to do here. Exploring the cultural side of Sobe, visitors can gaze at Renaissance and Baroque works of Baroque works at the Base Museum of Art, uh, view decorative and fine arts and other works at the Wolfs Wolfsonian FIU. Okay. Uh, see a concert at New World Symphony and learn about the Jewish experience in the region at the Jewish Museum of Florida. For horticultur horticultural fans, the Miami Beach Botanical Garden features Florida native plants and trees, plus Japanese edible and water gardens. Espan Espanola Way, a historic pedestrian-only street, features Mediterranean architecture, housing cafes, shops, and boutique hotels. And guided day excursions include boat, bike, and culinary tours. And visitors who want to explore on their own can rent a street legal golf cart. That would be fun to do. <laughs> Just the idea of being able to drive a golf cart in the street. Okay, food and drink. Sobe has a variety of restaurants from fine dining to casual beachside spots, serving everything from pizza and sandwiches to Southern comfort food and sushi. And Time Out Market Food Hall offers 20 stalls serving casual fare. Okay, so if they want to go to the restaurants, if they want to just kind of casually explore things, they have lots to choose from. All right, nightlife. It's no secret that South Beach is a nightlife haven. Visitors can dance to reggae, reggaeton, salsa, merengue, and other music genres, see live shows, sip cocktails in a glamorous hotel lounge or on the sand, and let their hair down at one of Sobe's popular dive bars. Okay. And accommodations. Many of the hotels along Ocean Drive are in historic Art Deco buildings. Accommodations range from boutique to grand hotels, from apartment hotels to all suite properties to limited service lodging. Okay. So again, you really can't go wrong with any beach. Um, just to kind of depends on what your client wants. Okay. All right. So I think we click next. All right. Pop quiz. Mix and match, how did I know that was gonna come up? Okay, so let's match the beaches to their descriptions. Let's see. All right, so. So South Beach is of course the most famous beach areas where you wanna be seen. Yep, okay. Uh, laid so back. One. Was... <laughs> Which one was laid back? The sunny aisles. Okay. There we go. And the pristine mile on pristine beach is Surfside. Okay. And so this one has to be Ball Harbor, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. So the order I have them in South Beach is the most famous. Surfside is the mile long pristine beach. Ball Harbor is the getaway for the rich and the famous. That's the bougie one. And then Sunny Isles is laid back, no frills. Okay, there we go, submit. Yes, awesome, good job, teamwork guys. Moving through. All right, and the surrounding areas. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ugh. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just work from left to right, okay? 
And thank you, John, for telling me right away how to pronounce this. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, with a large Cuban American population, Hialeah is a cultural hub. It's also an artistic community with artists and musicians living and working in the Lea Arts District. Okay, so let's see attractions here. Amelia Earhart Park offers recreational facilities, a lake for water sports, a petting zoo, a Tom Sawyer themed playground, and a dog park. Hialeah Park Racing and Casino features horse racing and is known for its colorful flock of flamingos. All right. Okay, food and drink, Latin cuisine is big here. Popular eateries include Ven Ventanitas, I'm so sorry with my Spanish, offering hearty, inexpensive food and uh, bodegas serving cafecito and croquetas, I think. All right, and Nightlife, a full service casino offers slots, card tables, roulette, and other games, as well as bars and restaurants, okay? So awesome, awesome, awesome area to go to. And again, if your client is kind of looking for kind of like an all-in-one thing, they're not too concerned with the beach itself. You see it's a, probably a little bit of a drive, but they could get an Uber or a Lyft. Um, Hialeah is a place you want to recommend. All right, uh, Doral. Doral is surrounded by world-class golf courses and resorts, and it offers cultural and adventurous activities as well. Okay, golf is a huge thing. If you can get clients that are interested into golf, that is one of the best ways to make commission for yourself because you not only have the golfers that go, usually you have the other people um, with them. It could be wives, could be friends, could be family members that maybe aren't interested in golf as they want to do something different. So you kind of see you're almost planning two vacations in one there. Um, so yeah, golf clients are always good if you can secure them. Great. So besides golf at nearby courses, Doral is home to the Florida Grand Opera, the state's oldest performing arts organization. At Planet Air Sports, Doral, uh, Planet Air Sports, Doral, adventure awaits with zip lines, bowling, climbing walls, a parkour course, and 360 degree rides, among other activities. And craft breweries open their tap rooms for tastings of some of Miami's finest local beers. Okay, food and drink. Dining options include Latin restaurants, gastro bars, steakhouses, and a chef's table restaurant. Okay. And accommodations, golf resorts, and other upscale hotels adjacent to the courses are plentiful. In addition, Doral offers mid range lifestyle, limited service, and business hotels. Okay. So again, lots to see and do. Uh, definitely if you have clients that are interested in golf, sometimes it's a golf trip and that's it. Other times, um, say like 50-50, you get that other, you know, other people traveling with them and you're almost planning two vacations in one. Like that. Okay, let's see the design district. All right, a magnet for jet setters and celebrities. The design district has dozens of galleries, showrooms and creative spaces and hosts a monthly art and design night every second Saturday. It's also a shopper's paradise with designer fashions and home decor stores. Great. So food and drink, the inventive dining scene here includes a variety of ethnic fare plus St. Rock Market, a chef-centric food hall with a variety of cuisines and a craft cocktail bar. Okay. And attractions, Besides galleries and showrooms, the Institute of Contemporary Art, ICA, Miami promotes in innovation in contemporary art and the exchange of art and ideas. Okay. So it's like this area is more about the things to do rather than places to stay. <clears throat> so jump down here to Coral Gables. One of South Florida's oldest cities, Coral Gables, is replete with old Spanish architecture and canopied streets that offers luxury hotels and boutiques, as well as a thriving restaurant and hip bar scene. Okay, let's see what there is to do around here. Performing arts are front and center with theatrical productions at venues like the Miracle Theater and the Gable Stage. <coughs> Excuse me. Immersive Theater at the Juggernaut Theater Company and jazz and classical concerts at the Coral Gables Congressional Church. 
Congregational Church. Sorry about that. Museums include the Coral Gables Merrick House, the city founder's boyhood home, the Coral Gables Museum, showcasing civic arts, and the Low Art Museum, University of Miami. Dragonfly Expeditions offers more than 20 tours, including Cuban heritage, kayak, and photography tours of Coral Gables and the surrounding areas. Okay. Right. Food and drink from cafes and brasseries to gastro pubs and steakhouses, Coral Gables offers a variety of restaurants. Nightlife. At night, visitors can kick back at sophisticated bars and lounges. And accommodations, luxury hotels, including the historic Biltmore Hotel, are among the lodging options here. Okay, so that's, I'm guessing that's the Biltmore since it was singled out. Okay. All right. On to South Dade. Home to two national parks, South Dade also consists of farmland with wildlife and exotic fruit stands, as well as historic sites. Attractions. All right. Biscayne National Park is boating, fishing, and is a boating, fishing, and diving paradise, while Everglades National Park is a natural habitat for alligators, deer, and other fauna. Visitors can move along the wildlife on a guided airboat or in tandem kayaks via Everglades Swamp Tours or visit the Everglades Alligator Farm or Monkey Jungle Wildlife Park. Many of, the, many of South Dade attractions pay homage to its homesteader and railway heritage, including the Cauley Square Historic Railroad Village, Gold Coast Railroad Museum, Deering Estate, Historic Homestead Town Hall Museum, and Florida Pioneer Museum. A 37-acre subtropical paradise nestled in thousands of acres of tropical greenery, the Fruit and Spice Park showcases the bounty of South Florida with its avocado pears, Mangoes, sapodillas, uh, pawpaw, papaya, lemons, limes, and more. Visitors will also find 500 varieties of exotic fruits, herbs, spices, and nuts from around the world. Guided tram tours are available, or you can enjoy a fragrant walk. Okay, so lot, lots of different stuff to do. Food and drink, laid back establishments, particularly fruit and vegetable stands are most popular. However, other dining options include marina grills and wineries. Okay. And accommodations. Accommodations consist mainly of a campground with eco tents and cottages and houseboat rentals in Everglades National Park. Okay, so this seems like it would be an area um, if your client wants to stay there, you wanna make sure that they're not gonna require the highest end luxury for accommodations, okay? But it does, it does sound a lot of fun. All of this sounds fun. Sorry about that. Somebody's at the door. Dog went crazy. All right, let's look at Wynwood. Right. A former warehouse district, Wynwood is South Florida's arts hub with more than 70 galleries and museums, plus street art from the United States and international artists. In fact, this district has the highest concentration of street art in the U.S., along with Wynwood Wall's famous open air murals. It's also home to creative and innovative businesses. Okay. All right, attractions, contemporary art, vintage photography, video, sculpture, murals, and installation art are among the art genres visitors will find at Wynwood's art venues, which include the Bakehouse Art Complex, the Margulies Collection at the Warehouse, the Ascaso Gallery, and Wynwood Walls. Visitors also can embark on a variety of guided tours from sightseeing to bar crawls, via a 15 person bicycle or drop by a brewery for tastings. Okay, so I think that 15 person bicycle, I think, I guess that's the one with like the table in the middle and you all pedal together to go around. All right, food and drink. Vegan, Asian, Italian, Latin, Caribbean, Mediterranean, Mexican. These cuisines and more bring artistry to food in Wynwood. There's even a restaurant with an art gallery and musical performances. Okay, and nightlife. Besides entertainment offered in the district's restaurants, visitors can also enjoy live music at any one of Wynwood's microbreweries. Okay, so lots and lots of different things to choose from here. Okay, if your clients are very artsy or they're interested in that, this would be an area that you want to suggest for them. All right, back to the map. And last one, Coconut Grove. 
Bayfront village of Coconut Grove has been described as Bohemian Bahamian due to its rich Bahamian, Bahamian history and culture with a Bohemian vibe. This quaint area's tree-lined streets are pedestrian and bike friendly. Just to be, just be on the lookout for the numerous peacocks that frequently roam. I have an irrational fear of peacocks, so I don't think I'll be around this area. It sounds kind of cool, but scary all at once. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all right, attractions. Historically and culturally significant homes like the Winston Elliott Scott House, former home of one of the first African-American astronauts, Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, a Renaissance-inspired estate in a canopy forest, and a home in Barnacle Historic State Park that exemplifies the modest life of early Coconut Grove are among the attractions. Active visitors can take sailing, kayaking, and powerboat classes, go on boat excursions, and charter a boat via Shake a Leg Miami. And not to be missed is the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, an event that unfolds along the Key Biscayne Bay each February. Okay, so remember uh, Coconut Grove, I think we had that in chapter one, Coconut Grove Arts Festival in February. Uh, Coconut Grove turns into an arts village displaying everything from painting to photography, from sculpture to jewelry, and mediums that include fiberglass, clay, metal, and digital components. All right. Food and drink, casual garden restaurants, and chef-driven eateries are among Coconut Grove's dining options. We have some nightlife here. Nightlife is varied and includes rooftop bars, a British pub, brew pubs, upscale bars and lounges, a Cuban venue with live mambo music, and an immersive nightclub featuring live circus performance art. Okay, so lots of different things there. And accommodations, from limited service to luxury, Coconut Grove offers a range of accommodations. Okay, so this seems, Coconut Grove has a little bit of everything for everyone. All right, so I think we're done with the map. Yes, okay. Pop quiz, another mix and match, yes it is, all right. So let's see if we remember where all of the uh, neighborhoods are supposed to go. Winwood right. open. Winwood's the open air. Okay, Winwood open air. Design, well, design air. district is uh, where arts and design and fashion meet. Okay. Doral's golf. Coral is yep. golf. No, Doral oh. is golf. Oh, Doral golf. My bad. Sorry. Coral Gables is Spanish architecture. Yeah. Spanish. Okay. Spanish architecture down here. Um, uh, Coconut I Grove is the uh, Bohemia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hylia is the Cuban American. Yep. And South Day is uh, farmland. Okay. All right. So this is the order I have them in. Wynwood, Design District, Doral. Hialeah, South Dade, Coral Gables, Coconut Grove. Okay, so take a picture if for any reason something is going on with your technology, but not, and we'll hit submit. Awesome, good job guys, teamwork. We are flying through this. All right, final exam, here we go. All right, another eight questions. This is good, I can, I can handle eight questions at a time. All right. Which area is known best as the American Riviera, made famous by world-class dining, art, and shopping venues along Ocean Drive? Is it South Beach, Downtown Miami, Hialeah, or the Everglades? Isn't it South Beach? I think it's South Beach. Because it says famous, world-class dining, Ocean Drive. That's what I'm going for. Although South Beach is perhaps most famous for its Art Deco architecture, it also boasts charming blank architecture along historic Española Way. Um, Baroque, or sorry, I'll read it properly, Mediterranean, modern, industrial, or Baroque? Baroque. Baroque, that's what I think. Okay, so submit. Okay. Mid Beach is known for its high energy dance clubs, one of which has a bowling alley and ice rink, resident alligator, petting zoo, or laundromat. Bowling alley, bowling alley ice, ice, ice rink. rink. Yeah. Kind of memorable. And I'm sure alligators probably wander in and around, but I think I remember reading bowling alley and ice rink. Okay. All right. If kicking back and spending an afternoon fishing is your client's dream, the best match for them would probably be 
Ball Harbor, South Beach, Sunny Isles Beach, or Mid Beach? Well, we know it's not South Beach because that's where you want to be seen at. Right, and Ball Harbor was the fancy, bougie area. I think it was I thought sunny. it was sunny. Yeah, no, I, I thought it... sunny was the bougie. No, uh, su Ball Harbor. Ball Harbor was there. It's sunny Isle. Sunny, sunny Isle. Isles. Isles. Yes, it okay. has the kitchen pier, outdoor adventure, lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. See, this is why it's good to do things in a group. <laughs> All right. The area with the pronounced, with the most pronounced Cuban flavor is which of the following? Hialeah, Ball Harbor, South Beach, or all of the above? I feel like when it has all of the above, it's always all of the above. <laughs> right. Yeah, the one thing that's throwing it off, it says with the most pronounced Cuban flavor. That's what I so, was thinking. Yeah. So if most wasn't in there, I would go with all. But seeing as most is in there, it's singling out one of the three. Right. And I don't think it's Ball Harbor. No, Ball, yeah, no. Ball Harbor and South Beach, that's where to be if you want to be seen and be part of all the action. I, I'm, I'm going to guess Hialeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right, let's go there. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> I've had a good run so far. Okay. All right. The area with the strongest Bahamian vibe is which of the following? Winwood District, Coconut Grove, Ball Harbor, all of the above. Coconut Grove. Coconut Grove. Yep. Yep. Okay. All of these places sound so much fun to visit for sure. I now want to visit Miami. I know. Right. I know. <laughs> that happens every time I do a certification with Marnie or I help her catch up on things. Then it's, I'm like, okay, I'll add that to my travel list. <laughs> Uh, last two questions here. Clients interested in viewing and or purchasing art and high-end design products would be well served by visiting the Wynwood District, the Design District, or both of the above? Both of them. Both of them. Both was, of them? Yes. Okay. Just guessing. All right. Here we go. Now this one should be all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Clients interested in experiencing arts of all kinds would enjoy... Yeah. Winwood, the design, Hialeah, South Beach, Mid Beach, Coconut Grove, all of the above. Got one wrong. There we go. Ah, uh, uh, right. The second one was Mediterranean. Darn it. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see where we went wrong. Uh, all right. So we can we still passed. So that's good. Yeah. Um. So let's see which one we got wrong. All right. So the first one was South Beach. Oh, got that right. I, I oh, was thinking Mediterranean. Really? And I didn't say anything. <laughs> All right, all right. Mediterranean. So along South Beach is perhaps most famous for its Art Deco, most charming. What then? What was Baroque? I know I read Baroque somewhere. That stuck out in my mind too. I think that was more of the art, wasn't it? Oh. Mm, okay. Maybe. Eh, whatever. We we did all right. We still passed. That's the bottom line. All right. So the, all the other ones were correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, this is the first one we didn't get a hundred on. So I feel like we're doing pretty good with Miami. Yeah, ab absolutely. Especially um, with you... all the different um, beaches to go to. No, absolutely. What was it? Like six or seven different beaches and then eight different neighborhoods. And I think we're doing all right. We can pat ourselves on the back here. All right. So we'll close out that. Remember, close out the tab that that was in or close out the window. And all right, we're on our last one. So we can push through, right? All right. All right, so it looks like this one is, oh, I'm gonna set mm -hmm. that, uh, itinerary suggestions, something More like that. Cruises. All right. All right, last one, and then we are done. So we'll push through this. If it goes a little over, if you have to leave, no problem. Um, I'll finish this up. And like I said, I send the video to Marnie. She posts it on her YouTube. Um, and then you can go back and finish if you need to. All right. Port Miami is known as the cruise capital of the world. Many sailings are bound for the Caribbean and several sail to Mexico, Central and South America and beyond. All right. So let's see. Cruise lines home porting in at Port Miami. Oop. Okay, cruise lines home porting at Port Miami. 
Azamara Club Cruises, Carnival Line, Celebrity Cruises, Crystal Cruises, Disney Cruise Line, MSC, Norwegian, Oceana, Regent Seven Seas, Royal Caribbean, Viking Ocean, and Virgin Voyages. All nice right. Dozen. There we go. So lots of them, lots of them make home port in Miami. Okay. All right. Other cruise lines making Miami port calls. Uh, is that Aida? Ida? Ida. It says German. Ida. Uh, hap Hapalog. Hap sure. Uh, those. Um, I'm not going to read these. It doesn't look like I can pronounce any except for Phoenix, Princess, Saga, <laughs> Scenic Luxury Cruises, Seaborn, and Windstar. Okay. So just about every cruise line is going to go um, in some way, shape, or form to Miami. Okay. Awesome. A whole bunch of them. Okay. And with those cruises, some uh, come passengers, more than 5.5 million on 1,220 total cruise ships docked in 2019 alone. Okay. So over like five and a half million people. Okay. For those who are embarking and or disembarking at Port Miami, the options for pre and post cruise stays are endless. Here are just a few suggestions of what three different types of cruise passengers families, couples, and LGBTQ travelers can see and do for a day or two in Greater Miami and the beaches. Okay, so let's see what we got here. All right, three uh, itinerary things and then a final exam. All right, let's see about families. With so much to see and do, Greater Miami and the beaches is a giant playground for families. There are simply too many attractions and activities to mention all of them in this course. So follow this link to the destination's family fun guides for a more comprehensive listing of options. Meanwhile, here are some suggestions, right? So if you click on this uh, link here, it will take you out of the course. So if you don't want to mess that up, um, once you complete everything, you can always go back and access these links um, and you should have them available to you in the marketing uh, hub for it as well. Okay, so let's see. just open up a separate tab. Oh, just a separate tab? Okay. So if you want to go ahead and click on it, you can click on it, but just for time's sake, I'm going to skip that and go to the next page here. Okay. All right. Day one itinerary. Start the day with a cruise on Biscayne Bay where you can enjoy panoramic views of the Miami skyline, Port Miami, Fisher Island, Miami Beach, and Millionaire's Row. Several types of day cruises operate out of, out of Bayside Marketplace, including a pirate-themed vessel. That's always a hit with kids. If you say pirates, families are like, okay, we have to do it. Um, and for adrenaline seekers, ages three and older, there's Thriller Miami, which features a speedboat ride and a jet boat that can spin 180 degrees, okay? So three and older, you're not gonna take a infant on this. Please don't, okay? <laughs> if your that client wants to, die. if your client wants to take their child, you know, their, their child on, you, you wanna make sure you have an age, age range there. All right. After lunch at Bayside Marketplace, a sun-filled outdoor mall on the bay, travel across the causeway to Jungle Island, home to some of the world's most rare and exotic animals. This immersive jungle experience includes treetop adventures, animal shows, and other fascinating exhibits. And for dinner and an evening of fun and games, cap off the day at Miami Seaquarium on Key Biscayne. This 38-acre world-class marine life and entertainment park is sure to delight children of all ages with its marine animal shows and daily educational presentations, okay? All right, day two. After breakfast, visit the Miami Children's Museum and let the kids play and learn with interactive programs like creating artworks in a variety of mediums, experiencing a construction zone to learn how buildings are built, playing virtual sports, and exploring a virtual Everglades environment. Next, head to the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science and grab lunch at its on-site cafe before exploring the facility's aquarium featuring South Florida's aquatic ecosystems, planetarium with space-oriented light and sound shows in a domed auditorium, and immersive exhibits such as how everyday objects were invented through engineering and solving design challenges through teasers, puzzles, and even bridge building. That looks like fun for me. I know. I was just going to say right? this. This is something yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, so I'm yeah, I, I don't, I'll borrow somebody's kid and go if that's the requirement. <laughs> I'll and have so fun by myself. It's a pack full of two days. Absolutely. 
at least, you know, and if you have kids, if your clients have kids there, they should sleep at night. There is so much to do. There should be no, no sleepless nights. With and them. with the weather. Yeah. De- yeah. Definite sleep time. Absolutely. All right. And, or if the kids need some outdoor time, head over to Key Biscayne for an afternoon of biking or walking the trails of Bill Baggs Cape Florida State Park. Sunsets at the lighthouse are simply magical. Mm. Oh, so maybe you get to climb up it. That would be cool. All right, pop quiz. All right, mix and match. All right, so we have Bayside Marketplace, Miami Children's Museum, the Science Museum, and Jungle Island. I would imagine the Miami's Children's Museum is the virtual sports. Okay. I'm guessing. Well, the Philip and Patricia Frost is the planetarium. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Jungle Island is the animals. Okay. So that would leave the Bayside Marketplace up here. Yeah, it's the base. Yeah. Okay. So Bayside Marketplace, pirate theme boat ride, Jungle Island, unusual animals, children's museum, virtual sports, and a science museum is the planetarium. Okay. Submit. Yay. Correct. All right. I feel like we're all going to take a trip to Miami now. <laughs> All right, couples and romance. Here we go. Miami has been a romantic oasis since the 1930s with warm breezes, white sand beaches, tropical foliage, swaying palm trees, and Azor waters. If your cruise arrives or departs in February, search for packages and de- deals and special events on miamiandbeaches.com. Okay, again, click on it. It'll take you to another window or another pop-up, but just for time's sake, we're gonna keep going on. But romance is in the air any time of year in greater Miami and the beaches. And here's a sample itinerary to help make the most of it. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, day one, start the day at the Base Museum where international contemporary art exhibits range from design to fashion to architecture and span a wide range of media. Have lunch at a Bayside Cafe, then hit the sand at any of Miami's iconic beaches. From the famed famed glamour of South Beach to the quieter no frills vibe of Sunny Isles Beach, which includes a clothing optional section at Hallover Beach Park. There's plenty to do from water sports and sunbathing to strolling hand in hand along the Miami Beach boardwalk. Indulge in a couple spa treatment at one of Miami's luxury hotels or day spas. If your cruise arrives or departs in July or August, you'll find plenty of packages and special pricing during Miami Spa Month. If we remember back from chapter one, that was up to almost 50% off, okay? So if they're cruising or if they just wanna visit, um, if they're flying down, taking the train, driving uh, July or August, if they're interested in spa treatments and wellness, that's, that's a time you wanna promote to them, okay? After dining at one of Miami's many romantic restaurants, including beachfront spots and those with city views, See a play, opera, concert, jazz show, or dance performance at the Cesar Pele designed Adrian Arst Center for the Performing Arts of Miami-Dade County, one of the world's leading performing arts venues. All right. And top off the evening with a nightcap at one of the numerous beach area lounges. Okay, so plenty to do if you have Couples that are interested in being very active or they want a more laid back experience, plenty of choices for both. Okay. Whew. Day two, stroll along Little Havana's Calle Ocho, Southwest A Street, and soak up Latin culture as you browse the shops of connoisseurs selling hand rolled artisan cigars, tailors creating custom gallabarreras, I am so sorry, uh, traditional linen shirts, and other merchants. There you can savor lunch at an authentic Cuban restaurant or a traditional Ventanita walk-up cafe while listening to salsa and merengue music. After lunch, head to South Dade, where you can spend the afternoon exploring Everglades National Park via hiking, canoeing, kayaking, or a guided boat tour, or Biscayne Underwater National Park via snorkeling or scuba diving. Not the active type? Check out Coconut Grove, a bohemian flavored arts colony with casual and quirky restaurants, cafes, boutiques, farmers markets, and festivals. Here you can visit, uh, here you can also visit Vizcaya 
Museum and Gardens, a 100 plus year old Italian Renaissance style mansion overlooking Biscayne Bay with art collections spanning many centuries and European inspired gardens. Okay, that looks like a nice place to go. And after dinner, what would Miami be without its iconic nightlife? So many choices from energetic nightclubs with dancing to quieter low key lounges. Okay, so plenty, plenty for couples to choose from. All right, and LGBTQ. Greater Miami and the beaches is known as America's Gay Riviera. Although the social scene is integrated, there are plenty of LGBTQ clubs and hotels, including businesses with pink flamingo certification, which guarantees that they are LGBTQ friendly. In addition, the LGBT Visitor Center in South Beach provides information, publications, and assistance with recommendations and reservations for hotels, activities, attractions, and dining, among other services. Among the plethora of options for LGBTQ clients, doo -doo -doo. all right. After breakfast, start the day at 12th Street Beach in Sobe, where the gay scene ranges from beach volleyball to sunbathing. While there, explore Sobe's Art Deco Historic District, which boasts nearly 1,000 historic buildings, either on your own or via the Miami Design Preservation League's guided walking tour or self-guided audio tour. Okay. After a leisurely, leisurely lunch at any of a number of sidewalk cafes lining Ocean Drive, Head to the Miami Design District. There you can browse 130 plus designer stores, art galleries, showrooms, antique shops, and other merchants. Okay. Keep, moving, keep moving south to explore the adjacent, adjacent Wynwood neighborhood, home to the country's highest concentration of street art, including Wynwood Walls, famous open air murals. This hip area also features dozens of galleries and museums. Since you're in the neighborhood, have dinner at one of Wynwood's award-winning restaurants. Or if you're here on the second Saturday of the month, check out the Wynwood Art Walk, 6 p.m. to late night, or the Design District's Art and Design Night, 7 to 10 p.m., during which time shops, during which time shops and galleries stay open late, and restaurants, craft breweries, and food trucks serve up a variety of fare for revelers. Or if you want to experience the vibe of a new glamorous hotspot, start the evening in the Fana District, located in Mid Beach, just a 10 minute walk north of the South Beach neighborhood. Treat yourself to dinner at one of its chef driven restaurants. Follow that up by attending a live performance from theater to cabaret at the Fana Theater, located in the historic Fana Hotel, which also houses a prolific art collection. and top off the night with a cocktail at one of Mid Beach's lively bars or glamorous lounges. All right, day two. It looks like we have two day itineraries here for these three. Start the morning with a Grand Miami tour helicopter ride. Cruise over the beach cities of Sunny Isles, Ball Harbor, South Beach, and Key Biscayne, as well as Coral Gables and Coconut Grove. Then stop for lunch at one of the quaint sidewalk cafes of Coconut Grove. After a full day outdoors, dinner at one of Coral Gables fine dining restaurants is sure to be the highlight of your day. And at the end, then kick the night into high gear at one of Miami's famed night spots. Take your pick. DJs, dancing and live shows in South Beach, glamorous cocktail lounges in Mid Beach, Little Havana's Latin vibe, Brick L's, hot bar scene, and everything in between, okay? So no matter what kind of client you have, if they are looking to travel to Miami, um, pre or post cruise, fly down, take the train, drive, um, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of things for people to choose from, okay? All right, LGBTQ events. Depending on the date of, depending on the date your cruise ship arrives or departs Miami, you can revel at an annual LGBTQ event. With so many throughout the year, there's bound to be one while you're in town. Among them, so let's see, we'll do February, March. Gay 8 Festival in February, a free one-day Latino LGBTQ art, music, and food street festival in Little Havana. And the Winter Party Festival in March, a six-day event with celebrity DJs, cocktail receptions, hotel pool parties, and a dance party on the beach. 
Okay. And we'll go to April, May. Miami Beach Pride Festival in April, a major pride celebration along Sobeys Ocean Drive. Outshine Film Festival in April as well. Featuring LGBTQ documentaries and movies on South Beach and at satellite locations citywide. And then in May, we have Sweet Heat Miami, one of the largest gatherings of urban women. And Sizzle Miami, a five-day festival that celebrates men who love men of color. Okay, so that's Memorial Day weekend. All right, June and July, let's see what we have. Out in the tropics in May and June, South Florida's first LGBTQ contemporary performing arts festival with comedy, circus acts, theater, and more. And then Wynwood Pride in June, the local community celebrates the full spectrum of diversity in the center of Miami's Wynwood Arts District. Okay, and then last one here, October, November. Aqua Girl in October, a week-long women's celebration with dance parties, art exhibits, live music, comedy shows, dining events, and a VIP reception. Celebrate or Orgulo, Orgulo, I'm saying that wrong and I apologize. Um, that's in October as well, a free two-week festival celebrating Hispanic LGBTQ pride featuring music, dance, fashion, art, uh, culture, and more. So, uh, circuit Phil. Circuit Festival Miami in November, a five-day citywide international dance festival starting on Thanksgiving Day. All right. So lots, lots to see and do just about every month of the year. Okay, pop quiz. Here we go. All right, match the activity. So we have a whole bunch of them. Let's see if we can figure this out. <laughs> I'm thinking beach volleyball is the 12th Street Beach in Sobe. Okay, that makes sense. And I think kayaking would be in Oleta State yeah. Park, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got the we got the outdoor stuff there. Wormwood, uh, Windwood is the view in the country's highest concentrated street arts. Okay. I do believe. Yep. All right. I feel like the no. architectural core is Sobe's Art Deco District. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So then dining has to be here, right? Yeah. Glamorous that's new. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So let's see. So beach volleyball, um, 12th Street, architectural tour, uh, Art Deco Historic District. Uh, concentration of street art in Wynwood, kayaking in the state park, and a dining in a hot spot is Mid Beach. Right? Yes. Good job, guys. All right. So we are now down to the final exam. This should be the last one for the program. Again, it's 3.08, so if you need to jump off for any reason, that's fine. Um, even after we do the final exam, if you have to take off real quick, that's fine. Okay. All right, 10 questions. Oh no, they upped it on us. Okay, let's go. Port Miami is known as the cruise capital of the world, America's French Riviera, Florida's wine capital, or the biggest, world's biggest shipyard. I would say the cruise capital of the world. Cruise capital of the world, yeah. I think that's what it is because there was like 20 different cruise lines that went through there, 20 or 25 of them, something like that. Okay, all right. Most of Port Miami's cruise ships set sail for Europe's major rivers, the Scandinavian fjords, the Caribbean, Bahamas, and parts of Mexico, the Arctic, the Arctic regions. That's spelled wrong, but yeah. I think it was the, the Caribbean, Caribbean, right? This one makes sense because Miami is right there. So go out to the Atlantic or go into the Gulf. Okay. In 2019, more than 5.5 million on 1,220 total cruise ships docked in Port Miami. I think that's 5.5 million people. I think it's missing a word there. Yeah. True. True. It's true. Okay. All right. A great resource for activities and sites of interest for families visiting Greater Miami and the beaches, uh, action-packed Miami updates, family fun guides, how to entertain your two-year-old in Miami or all of the above. 
Family Fun I Guides. I think it's Family yeah. Fun Guides. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Romance can be celebrated any time of the year in Miami, but blank is a good month to look for special deals and packages. February, July, August, or December? February, I think. I think that's what it said. Anyone remember? I mean, the spas are July through August by uh, Miami Spa Months. So, but if they're looking in overall, Uh, yeah, it looks like we're only going to be able to February. pick one. It's February. I just got 100%. So. Oh, okay. So it is February. Okay. All right. Here we go. So romance, February. Okay. All right. If a business has pink flamingo certification, that means it is qualified to care for flamingos and other birds, free of strict dress requirements, i.e. shorts and flip-flops are allowed, LGBTQ, I think it's supposed to be, friendly and expensive. Yep. It's... LGBTQ friendly? Yep. Okay. The base is best known in Miami as a concert Amazing. venue, charter fishing boat, museum, showcasing contemporary art, or great seafood restaurant. It's a museum, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Moving right along. A place to find European inspired gardens and art collections spanning many centuries is Cale Ocho, Jungle Island, Miami's Children Museum, or the Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if it's asking for gardens, we should pick the one that has gardens in it. Okay. Cool. All right, last two. Almost any time of year, travelers can find an event that recognizes LGBTQ culture. True, there are events ranging from the Gay Latino Festival in February to Circuit Festival Miami, Festival Miami, a citywide celebration of dance in December, or no, there are no other events beyond the Miami Beach Pride Festival in April. True. It's true, because I spent five minutes reading all of that. <laughs> okay, and last question. It's possible to include a variety of different ethnic and cultural experiences in almost any visit to Miami. True. 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 Yep. All right. Ooh, 100%. Awesome. A, we are, get there too. We're back on track. All right. So anyone need me to go over the questions? Nope, we're good. Okay. So let's click download certificate. I'm going to see what this does. Pops us out, but that's okay. Spinning, 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 spinning. All right. Do, do, do. Is it somewhere in here? Nope. I'm going to go. So if you're on this page, I think it's easiest to go to certifications and then just look for the certification we just did. Yeah, um, it's not popping up. Yeah. Not popping up. Hmm. Maybe it has to wait it. Yeah, it might have to wait a little bit. Um, or refresh the page. Um, da, da, da. Let me see. Now where did that? All right, let me let me try this. Let me close out of this one because maybe that's why it's not showing up. It's not registering that the course is done. Okay, so now we have four green dots. We have one, two, three, four completed. Let's go back over here. And I'm going to hit refresh. See if that does anything. Yeah, you might need to. Everybody might need to check there in progress because mine shows it as chapter four not being completed. Okay. Let's see, did that do anything? Yeah, yes. it's been the same thing for mine. Okay, so what you wanna do then, if it's not completed, um, see if it'll let you go back in. Um, sometimes if you try to go back in, it'll click over and say you actually did it. Um, if it doesn't do that, don't worry. Um, you should be able to, let me see if I can get back into so, this. So as soon as I clicked on review chapter, it came up saying that a fatal error occurred. So I don't know if anybody else is going to do that. Hmm. So when I closed out my, after I closed out my box that said download certificate, mm -hmm. um, and then I just refreshed it completely. 
um, my fourth one popped up and then it was able, I was able to click on um, my certificates. It's, it just said review certificates um, and my certificate popped up. Okay. Yeah, sometimes Travel Agent Academy can be a little bit finicky um, when it comes to viewing your certificates. Um, but for those of you that have had an issue, if the course is saying that you didn't complete chapter four, you should be able to go back in into it and you can click um, here, either resume or restart. Um, if resume doesn't work for you, I would click restart, go through everything. Um, and then obviously we have all the answers um, to the quizzes, uh, the pop quizzes and the final exam. Um, so if you need any help with that, um, see if that works. You can also try logging out of Travel Agent Academy and logging back in, uh, refreshing the page. Um, for some reason, I could not tell you why if I tried. Um, it, it's sometimes it gets a little funny. When you um, refresh yeah. the page, because I refreshed my page, when I refreshed it and I went mm -hmm. back, it showed me that I had one certificate and then I went in there and it's in there. Okay. Yeah, and mine's, even though I got that fatal error, it said that like, um, you're done with this information and I closed the screen out and reload it and it popped up in the certificates section. Okay. So yeah, um, just a couple of tricks to try with the website. Um, and if for some reason it's, um, if anyone has an issue where it's no matter what you do, it's not working, um, you can always uh, reach out to me. What am I, what am I gonna do here? All right, I'm gonna put my full name um, in the chat here. Um, so you can find me on Facebook, friend me on Facebook. Um, you can always reach out and I will do my best to try to help you figure out what's going on. Um, with it. Um, but you know, if you refresh, if you log out, if you kind of play around with the website a little bit, you should be able to access your certification. Okay. And, um, so what I normally do, I'll walk you through my process real quick. I download it to my desktop along with everything else I have on there that I shouldn't have on there. Let's see. So, and I name it, uh, greater Miami and beaches specialist certification, save. So that should be somewhere on my desktop. Yep, it's right here. So pop that open. You can take a screenshot of it, throw it up on Facebook, on your social media accounts uh, and promote yourself as a specialist. That's why you did this program. Um, so if you have any clients or you want to advertise about going to Miami, or even if you're planning a trip for yourself to Miami, it's always good to throw up there and, uh, you know, let other people know that, Hey, I'm a specialist. I have all the information you could possibly want. Don't forget that, uh, back in the course, you will have access to all of that marketing material, um, that, uh, greater Miami provides for you. Like I said, they are all, um, all of it is available digitally. Uh, but you can also reach out to them and ask if they're mailing out any physical copies. Um, if you prefer to have that and you don't want to use your own printer ink or go to Staples or Office Max or something like that. Um, some, some certifications, some destinations, they are mailing out physical copies. I know that if you complete the Hawaii destination specialist, um, there's, I think, six courses there and they're pretty long. They're pretty lengthy, but Marnie has all the videos up. Um, if you uh, request the collateral from Hawaii, they'll mail you physical copies um, with that. All right, so I'm just going to stop the recording now, but I'll stay on for a little bit.